What artifact set do you think is the most powerful in all of Raid Shadow Legends? It's kind of a tricky question. I mean, every time I come here to my artifact storage, I, it feels like the list goes on and on and on. It's getting longer all the time. They just added Feral and Pinpoint recently. And as a free-to-play player, one of the things that we talk about on this channel a lot is efficiency. We're always trying to get the most bang for our buck. Well, here's a question. I, I'm not sure we've ever phrased the question exactly this way before, but there are only nine gear slots, six artifact slots, three accessory slots. So one question of efficiency, of optimization could be, how can we cram the most benefit into those nine spots? What combination of artifact sets gives us the most stats and the most beneficial effects for our champions? So in today's video, I'm gonna examine that question a little bit and I'm gonna show you a couple of gear sets that I think really top the list of contenders for most powerful artifact set here in Raid. We're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive in terms of analysis. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this, and this is important, is that I know for certain there are a lot of you out there who are passing up on these two artifact sets. And the reason you're passing on them is because they're a little bit tricky to farm. But I think today's video is gonna show you exactly how valuable these sets are and hopefully encourage you to stop skipping on them and start farming. I am Cole Red. This is Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. Let's get started. Just a quick reminder, it is the month of September here at Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. We are shooting for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the month, and we are on pace to do it, but I still need your help. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so today and help us reach our goal. And as always, smash that like button and consider joining our Discord community. Thanks so much for all the support. Now let's get back to the video. When I knew I was gonna record this video, I decided to do a little research because I wanted to see what other opinions might be on gear sets. I know what sets I think are the most powerful, but I wanted to see what somebody else thought. So I came here to hellhades.com to see what HH and the gang think about the various gear sets. Now I've done this before. You can go up here to the Raid Shadow Legends drop down menu. This guide and tier lists section, you'll see there is an artifact tier list. Now I highly recommend you come here if you ever have questions about gear. What gear is good? What gear should I be farming? That kind of thing. This isn't the only research you should do, but it's definitely a stop on the search, right? You should definitely stop here and check it out. Now, as you can see, there's an actual artifact tier list, but then below it, there is a breakdown, an explanation of all of the sets and kind of a few notes of uh, wisdom, some advice here about, you know, what you want to use them for. So as you can see, there is an S plus tier with four sets and then an S tier that has a whole lot of sets an A tier that has a whole lot of sets. So I wanted to look at the S plus tier and the S tier just to see if the sets are ranked the way I thought they would be and if I'm missing anything. So as you can see in the S plus tier here, we have four sets. They are all nine piece sets, right? So they're all the variable sets. Stone Skin, Supersonic, Merciless, and Feral. Now, I know that Feral is only available through the Siege mode, and that means people are getting gear very slowly for the Feral set, but that's not a consideration in determining what the most powerful set is. That might be the most versatile set or most valuable set or most universal set, but if Feral is the strongest set, it's just gonna be the strongest set, and that's the way it's gonna go. Now for the S tier set, there are uh, sets, there are a lot of sets here, some classics, I'll quickly run down this list. Speed, Regeneration, Savage, Retaliation, Reflex, Cruel, Divine Speed, Perception, Guardian, Lethal, Bolster, Defiant, Impulse, Zeal, and then we get down to Slayer and Pinpoint here. Slayer and Pinpoint are nine piece sets. Everything else is a two or four piece set. So these are the only nine piece variable sets in the S tier. And then we do have some accessory only sets. We have the refresh set, the reaction set, and the revenge set. Now these accessories aren't part of an artifact set. They stand on their own, um, but they're highly valuable. As you can see, they're in the S tier. Um, so these gear sets come from all sorts of places. But I think what we're seeing is that the nine piece variable sets are very powerful. Not only are they really versatile, you can use just one piece for an extra bonus that you need, or you can use three pieces 
on your accessories and add really nice stats to a regular build, or you can go all the way up to the nine piece bonus if you want. And as a result, realistically, the most powerful set in the game has to be a nine piece set. And I do think with maybe the exception of Slayer, that the four pieces up, the four sets up here are the most powerful sets. So I think Slayer could potentially be an S plus set, but it's okay that I, you know, I'm okay with it only having four sets in the tier. Out of these four, I actually think two are better than the other two. I think Stone Skin and Merciless are extremely powerful, right? Stone Skin does something that no other set really does at all. That Stone Skin buff is unique and it's overwhelmingly powerful in any kind of PvP situation, including live arena and siege mode and anything. So that's definitely amongst the most powerful pieces. And I think as far as the damage sets are concerned, even more than Slayer, I think Merciless is incredibly powerful. I think it's better than Supersonic and Feral. So those are the two sets we're going to be looking at today. These are the two most powerful sets, in my mind, in Raid Shadow Legends. So let's go ahead and look at a little comparison between these two sets. Now, I haven't done one of these in a while, and for a long time, viewers of the channel, you may be experiencing a little bit of nostalgia. I used to do these kinds of things frequently back in the early days of the channel. And yes, this is a PowerPoint presentation. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this graphic very quickly, and you don't have to do any math. It's going to make a lot of sense to you, and it's definitely going to help you understand these sets better. So let's just start with the left hand column here. This is the set bonuses as they are listed in the game. So each and every piece of the nine piece variable set gives a unique benefit. And so all of them are listed here. Now the benefits here are the equivalent that you would get from a set. So if there is a statistical benefit, for instance, you get 8% HP, I am finding the closest equivalent set that would give that benefit and then quantifying how many pieces would give that benefit. So the closest piece that would give HP is a life set piece, right? Two pieces of life gear give 15% life, 15% HP, sorry. So that means each piece gives 7.5%. If you could break it up that way, obviously one piece of life gear doesn't give you anything, but if we take the value and split it in half, we get 7.5% HP. This piece does slightly better. It actually gives 6% more life so or HP. So we're getting 1.06 pieces worth of benefit. And then I am just putting the sum over here so that we can keep track of that. So this is sort of the calculation. And then this is the result. I hope that makes sense. It may, may make more sense as I go through it. But that's the way this chart is set up. If we look at the first three bonuses here, they just give statistical benefits, no special skills or anything. And as you can see, it's basically 5.06 pieces worth of statistical benefit for only three pieces of gear. So this is very nice. We are actually two pieces ahead in terms of stats for our champions. When I say statistical benefits, that's what I mean. HP, resistance, defense, crit damage, speed, whatever it happens to be, that's a stat that goes on your champion. That's what I mean by statistical benefit. Now here at four pieces, we change it up a little bit because we get that unique special effect, the stone skin buff. So as you can see here, that's what I've listed. It is hard to quantify the value of a stone skin buff in terms of pieces. So I have just separated here. So here we still have the same value in terms of statistical pieces. And then we have a special benefit. So this is how I'm gonna list it. Now five, the five piece bonus is statistical. We get a whole defense set, that's nice. And at six pieces, we increase the duration of that stone skin buff. So here we're at seven pieces of statistical benefit and a two turn special. Seven and eight are more stats. And then at nine piece, we get the stone skin buff. Um, durability is like improved, so it can take more damage. You can remove a stone skin buff by damage, and this basically gives it 50% more HP. So at the end of all of this, this is what we end up with. We end up with 10.12 pieces of stats out of nine pieces of gear. And these stats are not the stats that are like on the piece. They're the stats from the set bonuses, right? So remember when you wear like a regular ring, like a high elves ring or something, you're not getting a set bonus. 
You're not getting a set bonus unless you're wearing like a revenge ring or a blood, uh, blood shield ring or something like that, right? So these statistical benefits are like 10 pieces of set gear that gives stats as the bonus. So imagine like you were wearing 10 pieces of life resistance and defense gear. That's basically what you're getting here. You're getting 10 pieces of that kind of gear in terms of bonuses. And in addition, you're getting the incredibly powerful stone skin buff and it's 50% stronger than the normal buff. This is really powerful. It's a ton of stats. It's a ton of stats. They're not super high value stats, HP, defense, and resistance. Like it's not maybe as high value as like speed or accuracy or crit damage or crit rate. But it's still a lot of stats for nine pieces of gear. If you're not convinced that that's a lot of stats, think of it this way. Let's say you built a champion in one set of life gear, one set of resistance gear, and one set of defense gear. That's six pieces, right? You would be getting 15% HP, 40 resistance, and 15% defense. That is six pieces worth of set bonuses. You get nothing for your, uh, your accessories. So that build gives you six pieces of, of stat bonuses or set bonuses. Here you get 10 pieces. So a lot more. In addition, you get that buff. Now, again, we can't quantify how good a stone skin buff is, but if you've ever fought against it in live arena or siege mode or 3v3 arena, you know how strong stone skin is. Okay, so that's stone skin. Let's go ahead and look at Merciless. Merciless is different than stone skin in the sense that it doesn't give a unique buff. All of the benefits of these set bonuses can be quantified as part of other sets, right? So when it, gets, when it gives ignore defense, you can think of that as comparable to a savage set. So that's how we're going to compare it. So all of this is much more quantifiable than the stone skin buff. Now, if we start with this, what we'll notice from the first three pieces is that we kind of are not as, we're not doing as well in, on stats as we were in the stone skin set. We end up with 3.67 pieces worth of set bonuses from three pieces of gear. So we're not even a piece ahead, right? At this point, stone skin is much stronger. You can see stone skin is five pieces ahead at the three piece mark. I'm sorry, it's two pieces ahead, right? It's getting five pieces of benefit from three pieces. So it's like two free pieces ahead. Here we're not even a piece ahead. However, at the four piece set bonus, that changes. All of a sudden we get 30% chance for a cooldown reduction. So we can reduce the cooldown of one skill by one turn. This is the same effect as a reflex set. Now I will say there's a small difference here. For Merciless, you have to do damage in order to get this effect. But since you're putting this set on damage dealers, most of the time you're going to get this effect. There are a few damage dealers who wouldn't all the time. If you have an extra turn mechanic or a self buff mechanic that doesn't result in damage, this bonus won't fire. So recognize there is a slight difference between how this works and a reflex set works. But I'm not gonna quantify that. It's hard to like figure that out. So I'm just gonna call this three quarters of a reflex set, right? You get four pieces of a reflex set gives you 40% cooldown reduction. This only gives you a 30% chance at a cooldown reduction. So it's three quarters of it. So that's three pieces worth of special value. So now over here, what you're noticing is I've broken it up just like I broke up the stone skin thing. We have 3.67 pieces of stat bonuses, and then we have three pieces worth of special bonus, in this case, cooldown reduction. So again, we get stats for five piece, but then at six piece, things get really bonkers. Here we're getting 35% ignore defense. This is the most ignored defense you can get from six pieces of gear in any way, shape, or form in the game. If you think of a savage set as like four pieces, that gives you 25%, and then you throw a cruel on there, that would get you to 30%. So this one piece of gear, going from five pieces to six pieces, actually gets you more ignore defense than you can get in any other six piece combination. That's super powerful, and it's worth 5.6 pieces of savage gear. It's 40% more effective than a savage set. So all of a sudden we've jumped to 8.6 special pieces. We're up to 14.27 pieces of set bonuses. 
That is bonkers for six pieces of gear. It's absolutely bonkers. If you can get a damage dealer in a six piece merciless set, you should. All right, so let's go past the seven and the eight, eight pieces. Those are both statistically fine. Again, the speed's not great. It's less than a piece, um, but the crit damage is better. And we land on the nine piece. Now, the nine piece bonus is 15% chance of an extra turn. The set that gives you an extra turn is relentless, and this is 83% as effective as a relentless set. That is 3.3 pieces of relentless gear, right? A relentless set is four pieces, and you're getting the value of 3.3 pieces. So here what we end up with is 8.8 pieces. The equivalent of eight pieces of set bonuses. So two four-piece set. I guess they would have to be four two-piece sets, right? So like four attacks, uh, offense sets, four speed sets. That's that's what we're getting statistically the benefit of. We're getting eight pieces of gear benefit. And then 12 pieces of special gear benefit for a total of basically 20 pieces of gear. So this nine piece set, if you want to simplify all of it and all of the language is confusing you, this nine piece set is worth the equivalent of 20%, 20 pieces of gear. Now, again, if we look at the stone skin set, this is the equivalent of 10 pieces of gear. These nine pieces of gear are equal to 10 pieces of gear plus that very powerful stone skin buff, right? For two turns at 150% HP. So now this is even, it's even a little bit deceptive. Because one of the things you might think of is like, okay, you're only getting eight pieces of benefit from nine pieces of gear. Aren't you behind the curve? Except if you think of the way it works in game, imagine you built a champion with three pieces. Like you want to build a fast champion. You just put him in three pieces of speed gear and then a regular set of accessories. So a ring, amulet, and banner that are just like, you know, high elves or whatever. You are actually getting six, you're getting three set bonuses. You're getting three speed set bonuses, 30%, 36% extra speed. So that's the equivalent of six pieces of set bonuses. You have six speed pieces on your champion. So this is, is more than that. It's two additional pieces of set bonuses. It would be having, it would be like having eight pieces of speed gear on your champion, which you can't do. That's how many stats you're getting. And that's just the stats. Now we're looking at 12 pieces of special gear. So imagine that a Savage set, a Savage set doesn't give you any stats. It doesn't give you attack or crit damage or health or anything. It just gives you a special effect, ignore defense. This is like having three sets of Savage on your champion. In terms of benefit, it's not that specific benefit, but in terms of benefit, it's like having three sets of Savage plus four sets of speed or offense or whatever. You're getting 20 pieces of benefit from a Merciless set. So if you are not currently farming Merciless, I don't know what to tell you, but start farming Merciless. This is an incredible benefit. Another way to look at this is if you think of each of these pieces as like, combined in terms of stats. If you take the first piece and the fifth piece, that's 25% attack. And if you take the sixth piece bonus, that's 35% ignore defense. I'll call that ID, ignore defense. So three pieces of Merciless are giving me those three bonuses. I know you have to build up to them, but those are three specific bonuses, one for each piece. If I wanted to reproduce this in game with regular sets or other sets, I'd need ignore defense and attack. So I'm thinking cruel, right? And savage. So if I do two sets of cruel, that gives me 30% attack and 10% ignore defense. And then I can add that to a savage set. And that would give me 30% attack. 
and 35% ignore defense, the same amount of ignore defense. That's about as close as I can get in game. But this is a two piece set. Cruel is a two piece set, which means that's four pieces of cruel and savage is a four piece set. That's four pieces of savage. That's eight pieces of gear. I can't put on eight artifacts. I literally can't do this. I cannot reproduce these stats with regular sets. It's impossible because I don't have enough slots. And we started this whole thing thinking, what's the most efficient use of each gear slot? Well, it's the Merciless set. And it's not even close. Now, there's more to consider. So I want to look at a little bit of a comparison here. We're going to talk about some pros and cons. So I did this stone skin versus merciless comparison. Um, these are just, you know, the major bonuses, because I think that's where most people will end up or are considering ending up. But I do want to look at those a little bit. Um, I will say the nine piece stone skin set is probably not valuable for the vast majority of players. You don't need to break that stone skin. Like you don't you don't need to have your champion resist damage with the stone skin. Like you don't need that extra durability. So I think realistically, six piece stone skin is the best PowerPoint or <laughs> PowerPoint presentation, like peak. That's where the, that's where you peak. That's where you're most efficient. I do think the four piece is also highly efficient. You don't always need the two turn buff for the merciless set. I would say nine piece is awesome. Six piece is awesome. I wouldn't go lower than that. I think the four piece is OK, um, but this is kind of like not great yet. Right. You're getting cooldown reduction, but you really want damage and you get the ignore defense at six piece. So that's where you want to be. I think this is actually probably the highest peak of power efficiency. As far as the stone skin, there are several pros. It's a unique on spawn buff. You just get it. You get that stone skin buff when you come in. It can't be removed. It's, it's such a nightmare. It is the OP PVP set. But that shows you what the first con is, which is that it has limited value in PVE. There are some PVE places where you can use it. For instance, Dark Fae. Dark Fae is a place where you can actually build a team in Stone Skin and it's kind of cool. And there's some other places like Bommel. You know, there are places where you can actually use Stone Skin in PVE, but it's limited. The maximum duration is two turns. So if the fight goes five turns, you lose your Stone Skin buff and they don't have to do anything. They don't have to remove it. Uh, so long boss fights, it doesn't really help. Basically, it helps in short fights in PvP or PvE. And the effects can be countered, and I think that means the value is decreasing because there are more and more champions that have been introduced to the game that either circumvent Stone Skin, like just ignore it, like uh, Mezumel, or there are champions that remove it and have been given to everybody free or through fusions, like Wukong, who can strip the buffs, and um, Armands, who can strip buffs. So uh, there's a lot of ways now to counter Stone Skin. Stone Skin has been the overwhelming, most powerful PvP set, like stiflingly so, for the last two years. And now finally it's starting to be broken. The Stone Skin meta is starting to be broken, but it's still the meta and it's still incredibly powerful. Um, so I do think, you know, in terms of like the most effective sets, it's very, very much up there. But you can see that Merciless is stronger. The pros for that, I think, it's the highest ignore defense set in the game. You can actually get to 40% ignore defense. If you do a four piece, four artifacts of Merciless and two accessories of Merciless and then two artifacts of Cruel, you can get to 40% ignore defense. And that's the highest ignore defense you can actually reach in the game with sets. This set is valuable in PvE and PvP because when you need damage, you need damage and you need damage everywhere. And there are three special effects, which is insane. You basically have a Savage set, a Reflex set, and a Relentless set all on the same set. Now, there are some cons. I think uh, there's some reduced value for defense and HP-based damage dealers. However, I will say all you lose is these two bonuses. And those two bonuses are worth roughly 3.3 pieces of gear. So you, you lose 3.3 here, which means you would end up with about... Uh, I'm sorry, what is that? That's 4.7 plus 12. You're still ending up with roughly 16.7 pieces of benefit on nine pieces. So this was the sh most shocking thing. I actually think, and you can let me know your opinion in the comments. I actually think the Merciless set 
is the best damage set for defensive based damage dealers and HP based damage dealers as well, as long as you're going to at least the six piece bonus. That's bonkers. That's absolutely bonkers. But it's better than a savage set. So if you're going to put them in a savage set, you may as well put them in a merciless set because it's better. There is an additional con here, which is that cooldown reduction and extra turns may be undesirable in certain fights. For instance, cooldown reduction is punished against Amius the Lunar Archon. He gets free turns. So you don't want your merciless champion. I'm sorry, you don't want your damage champion in merciless set at all, because remember, this is the four piece set bonus. So that cooldown reduction comes right away. So that basically means you can't use Merciless against Amius or you're going to pay the price. Um, the extra turn mechanic is a little bit more friendly because it's on the nine piece bonus. But sometimes you don't want extra turns for speed tunes like for Clan Boss and Hydra. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. So just be aware that extra turn can throw you off. Sometimes just a quick reminder for all of you about where you can get this gear. The Hydra boss is where you can get stone skin. You also get protection, which is another very good nine piece variable set uh, from Hydra clan boss. Now the chests will drop the artifacts, but if you want the accessories, you have to participate in clash and you will get artifacts. I'm sorry. You'll get accessories from here. Um, you can get them. I think from your personal chests, like these chests down here, just for participating. And then if your clan, finishes in the top three places and you've done enough damage you can get a chest and get additional pieces there as far as the merciless set is concerned you need to get that from the city of Centronos. every single boss in Centronos will drop gear or accessories so you can see the chest here is a gear chest and if you go over here you'll find another yeah this boss over here this is an accessory chest there are more gear chests than accessory chests um, Amius also drops both. So if you can clear Amius in normal or in hard mode, you're going to get a lot of rewards there. One thing you should know is that all of the pieces, both from Hydra Clan Boss and from Centronos, are going to be at least five star rares. And you can also get mythic gear. So you're going to get rares, epics, legendaries, and mythics of five star or six star quality. So extremely good gear. Obviously, RNG still plays a factor in terms of your stats on the gear but you're at least going to get decently high quality gear. And it's about the same amount of gear here in Centronos as in Hydra. So if you max out both opportunities, if you get all the gear that you can from both locations, um, it's going to be about the same. I think you get a little bit more from Centronos, but Centronos is also a little harder to max out. Most people can't max out hard mode. I know I can't. I can't get all 100 locations or 101 locations in hard mode. Um, so. You get a little bit more gear from Centronos, but it's also a little bit harder to get all that gear. But still, you can probably get somewhere in the vicinity of like 40 to 60 pieces of gear per month, which is hopefully enough to maybe gear one champion per month with really good gear and maybe another champion with mediocre gear. So consider it. Consider getting in here and doing as much as you can. You may as well start now because the gear, as you can see, is absolutely amazing. Okay, that is it for me. Let me know in the comments below. First of all, did I get it right? Is the Merciless set the most powerful set in the game? Or do you think it's one of the other sets? And second of all, have I convinced you to go and try farming this gear? I hope I have. Even if you're in the early or mid game, you can probably get a few pieces. And if you can't, especially in Hydra, because your clan isn't doing Hydra, come check out our clans. We got clans for you, man. We hit Hydra every week. All right, that is it for me today. I have been Colred. Thanks so much for hanging out. I will see you in another video soon.